You think you'll live forever, but then you die and find yourself in a place like this. Not that you miss much of what you leave behind. You can do without gossip, reality shows and cheeseburgers. Actually, the worst thing is to find out that you aren't as dead as you think. Yes, I know that my European fans wouldn't expect to find me in a cape, but at least my new fans work better than my denture and they don't prevent me from talking, so I can stun young ladies with my intellectual jokes before biting them. I wonder what my analyst would say about me turning into a vampire. It is clearly a psychosomatic effect of your Oedipus complex. It's Freudian. He blames Oedipus even for hemorrhoids. Anyway, you want to know how it happened? It was a girl I met at the Met exhibit. It was September. I was feeling kind of sweet and low down, and she looked like mighty Aphrodite herself. I like Munch, Schiller, Otto Dix, all those anguished expressionist paintings. I guess that's why she found me attractive. She was such a young, pretty thing. But it turned out that she was 300 years older than she looked. I bet it was my ex-wife Hannah and her sisters of the feminist circle to set it up. Always plotting crimes as misdemeanors, those witches. I bet that all those pilot sessions are really would rights against ex-husbands. I guess I'd like to relocate now. Too many vampires in Manhattan already, with all those lawyers and Wall Street speculators. And I need a new name. What about Count Zillig, vampire lord of bananas and the tropical islands? Too sunny, you say? But it would be definitely better than the shadows and fog of this cemetery for my rheumatics. Huh? Whoa! I bet that Fellini and Bergman didn't have nightmares like these. Oh, Woody, you always talk too much, just like in your movies. Now please shut up and be a good sleeper. <laughs>